Hey, welcome back to week four of this Cannibal Growth Group experience. My name is Mark. I serve in our Venice Church location. Now, this has been such a fun series in my church. So many people, they're sharing stories of how God is moving them forward in their faith. And I'm hearing those same stories from all of our pastors in all of our churches. Now, I want to remind you, use our special Cannibal website. Go to jumpinmakewaves.com. All of our growth group content is there. There are more great cannibal faith stories you can watch from the members of all of our churches. You can also read up on all we hope to accomplish through this generosity initiative. And you can share your story. We'd love to hear how God is speaking to you and challenging you to jump all in with him. So simply click share your story and let us know how this series and study is impacting you and your family. I hope you've been enjoying our group teachings and stories and discussions. We have another great week lined up right here. So let's jump right in to this week's teaching. Welcome back, East Lake Network family, for week four of our Cannonball Study. This week, we're going to be talking about transformation. We'll be looking at some passages in the New Testament that talk about how God transforms us as we trust Him. As we begin this week, I want you to consider a pretty tough question. Is there something in your life that if you were asked to surrender it to God, you're not sure you could do it? Jesus called his followers to surrender their entire lives to God. And that's what a cannonball really is, a full immersion as you jump into the water, fully surrendering ourselves. In the Old Testament portion of scripture, we see offerings were a regular part of their worship. Sometimes it was money, sometimes it was livestock, sometimes it was produce. These worship practices were important disciplines. They taught and reminded God's people that their sins were forgiven and their blessings were from God and that part of their resources were to bless and help others. These same principles, God wants us to learn them today. But once Jesus came, he fulfilled what those offerings had only represented, only a, a foreshadow of what they truly meant. We often say that Jesus came to show us God's love, set up God's kingdom, shut down religion, save us from sin, and send us out on his mission. Now, Jesus shutting down of religion, that happened clearly and completely on the cross, when Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice so that we would not have to make that same sacrifice. Yet what he asks of us as his followers is actually huge, that we would surrender our entire lives to him. Listen to Jesus's words in Matthew 16, verses 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own life, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. So let me ask you this question again. Is there something in your life that if you were asked to surrender it to God, it would be a challenge? There are only a handful of examples in the Bible where God asked someone to give 100% of all they had. There was uh, a widow that the prophet Isaiah asked that she give the last of the flour that she had for her and her son. And it was in a time of, uh, of drought and great need in the nation. Well, instead of making some bread for herself, for her son, the prophet said, give it to me as an offering to God. There was uh, the rich young ruler where Jesus said, give everything and follow me. It was because that, that was in, in the way. All his resources were keeping him from faith. There was uh, the widow who put in her last two coins. Now, we don't necessarily know that God had asked her to do it, but she gave all. The reality is God is probably not asking any of us to give him 100% of all our resources. Uh, empty out your 401k, uh, sell your home and give it all. But he is asking us to honor him with 100% of all we have. So what does that mean? It means surrender. It's looking at your life and the things in it and asking yourself the question, am I honoring God with the resources that God 
has given to me, entrusted to me. Some of those resources are gonna be financial. And some of those resources are going to be time, uh, maybe some stored resources, and certainly your talents. Are you leveraging all that God has given you 100% for Him? Is it all available? Now, I know many of us have been wrestling with this cannonball commitment for quite some time. And we're coming close to our final moments before our response. My hope and prayer is simply that all of us would take the time, pray, hear from God, that we'd listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and then we would simply do what He wants us to do. And if we all do that, I am confident that God will grow our faith and help us accomplish all He has called us to do. It's what He's always done. We've seen it time after time around here. I am so excited for you in this process. I know that my faith story and my wife Carmen and I, our faith story has been marked by moments of surrender and commitment. And, and I know that many of you have done this before in previous generosity initiatives, maybe here or, or somewhere else. But I also know for some of you, this is a first. And I am confident that God is going to meet you as he leads us boldly into doing a cannonball of faith for him. Would you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for the invitation to surrender and follow you. Help us discover the real life, abundant life that is found in you. As we make these cannonball commitments, fill us with faith and boldness, knowing you are with us and that you are for us. Amen. Hi, I'm Mike Friesen. In uh, May of 2004, accepted a job at San Diego State University, and we were moving from Santa Barbara to San Diego, and people eventually suggested to us to come look at Chula Vista, which we were like, yeah, I don't think so. Um, but we came to look at a house and, and literally came around uh, the lake and went, whoa, this is amazing. And so as we were driving away uh, from putting our application in on the first place, we came and drove down and saw East Lake Church and said, oh, that's a cool church, let's, let's go try that. I was sold, I, I really felt like this was home. We have a 13-year-old and a soon-to-be 11-year-old. We've seen a ton of change, not only in our marriage and family um, and growth, um, but we've moved two or three times within the community here and how this particular campus has grown to the network of churches um, and just all the opportunities in, in the San Diego communities, but also communities you know uh, outside of San Diego. And we've both been in many growth groups. Um, I've been in men's groups for years. Uh, we've been in couples groups. We currently have a junior high group that we do uh, with my son Cole and his buddies. When we first were really challenged to, to tithe um, the full 10% and be faithful in it, we felt like we weren't sure where that money was gonna come from or how everything else was gonna work out beyond that. And one of the things that we saw, uh, you know, from the beginning and still to this day is that he's given back to us and made things work where they maybe shouldn't have worked. We've been provided for in every step of the way, and it's been in every aspect. It hasn't just been the financial side. Of course, we've been blessed financially um, beyond our comprehension, really, since we started tithing, but in every area. So we're excited about Cannonball in a lot of ways. As our kids have grown and life becomes just very full, um, it's easy to get complacent and comfortable with where you are. And we're excited to be stretched again. We're excited to see people take that step for the first time like we did. If you're on the fence of whether to, to jump in for Cannonball, um, I, I think one of the things I would just say is, is just do it. See what happens, test God, see what, what He says about His finances if it's true. And, and you're gonna find out, um, much like we did, uh, what happens, making that splash. It's all those waves and ripples that go on and who they touch and who they'll impact um, in the years to come. And my hope is that that will be something for our kids um, and that they will also then in turn maybe do something for their kids. And so it's not just that it's gonna happen right now, but what this means for, for really our family and our friends and those that we, we touch.